The world out there is not looking for a new uh, definition of Christianity. They're looking for a new demonstration of Christianity. We're called to demonstrate the power and the love of God. You know, the Bible says the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. And so that's what's been burning in my heart is to demonstrate His power and His love. Hello, this is David Diga Hernandez, and you are watching ETV interviews here on the Encounter TV Network. My guest is Matt Cruz. Raised in church as a pastor's kid, Matt Cruz grew up familiar with the things of God. Though he knew of the Lord, Matt didn't come to know the Lord himself until he had a true encounter with the Holy Spirit. However, that encounter didn't take place in the surroundings one would expect. Matt was transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit in the basement of a house. Having encountered God's power outside of a church setting himself, Matt now takes that same power beyond the boundaries of where people expect to encounter God. His street evangelism testimonies regularly go viral, have been seen by tens of millions of people, and inspire believers all around the world to share the gospel. Matt Cruz is a bold and spirit-led evangelist. Matt, my friend, welcome to the program. Thank you for joining us. I so appreciate, and I really mean this, the gift that's on your life. You're anointed, you're a powerful preacher, and I am thrilled to know that there's a ministry like yours that's affecting the world today. So mm -hmm. the viewers already have seen you. Most of our viewers know who you are. They've mm -hmm. watched the other interviews we've done with you. But I want you just to catch us up to speed. What's been going on in the ministry? How has God been moving in this generation? Just share with us what the Lord's been doing. Yeah, so it's an honor to be back here. I, every time I walk in here, I'm like, this is just amazing what God's doing here in this set, reaching people all over the world through cameras, and it's just amazing. But God has been moving. He has been on the move. Um, obviously, we've been in quarantine at home doing live stream services for different churches uh, in different states. And for context, for those of you who watched this maybe years later, this is actually being filmed during the COVID-19 pandemic. So yes. very different world we're living in for the time being, but you have adjusted things for that. Yeah, absolutely. And speaking of adjusting, I believe that as the body of Christ, as followers of Jesus, we're called to adapt to this. And, um, you know, people are probably like, man, we've never been locked in a house. And I feel like God is saying, well, you've never been locked into me. You've never been this locked into me, you know, at home alone where you can get in the word and get in his presence and really hear from him clearly. Uh, get away from the busyness of life, you know, and distractions and just really focus on what God is saying. So that's what I've been doing. I've really been hearing God, um, again, doing live streams, uh, services for different churches. We've been hosting these online Zoom uh, conferences, the Those meetings. Those are amazing. And for the viewer who doesn't know what Zoom is, I'm sure most people know, but Zoom is basically like a multi-way video conference where you can see the people, the people can see you. It's basically like having a whole church service, but right there on the screen, you can see all their faces and yeah. they can see each other. It's like, a, it's an online community, really. Yeah. And you've been really utilizing this tool and God really is using these Zoom conferences. Absolutely. Um, it's literally like when you go live on Facebook or Instagram, you see the number. Imagine all those numbers just in front of you. Everybody's seeing people. you. Yeah, and you're seeing them. And so we had live worship. Uh, we started off, the first one was called Know Your Assignment. And hundreds of people just in this Zoom meeting, uh, worshiping God. I mean, families were putting the, the whole uh, Zoom meeting on their TVs in their living room. Families were holding up signs, shouting us down like we were in an actual sanctuary. It was so beautiful to watch. But God has been touching people through uh, a laptop screen, through a phone screen. His anointing has just been tangible. And people have been getting filled with the Holy Spirit, healed from sicknesses and pain in their bodies, baptized in the Holy Ghost. You witnessed that uh, Sunday night. You got to close us out for our last one. I thought that was incredible, kind of just Amazing. the flow of that whole thing. You had me come on, and I taught on the baptism with the Holy Spirit. It's amazing. And the clips you sent me, people instantly baptized. One lady had her phone, and she goes out onto the power right there, right yeah. there. And this is how the Lord is using your ministry. And this is just an incredible opportunity, I think, for the body of Christ. And I truly believe that you are a voice that God is going to use, is using, is mm -hmm. using, but is going to even use in greater measures for this generation. I really do when I see your ministry and others like you, it's like there's this whole different feel to it. It's fresh, it's, it's unique, it's different. 
And so that's one of the many reasons why I'm having you on right now. But there's a word in your spirit right now concerning the anointing. Mm -hmm. And I want you to release that word over the ETV viewer right now. Absolutely. You know, so many people, David, they say, why am I anointed? Or I don't know what God has called me to do. I want to know my purpose. And, you know, obviously we tell people like, you can't discover your purpose unless you first discover his presence. And that's so true. But I believe that more now than ever, we need to know the importance of why we are anointed. People think of anointing as, you know, you smear, uh, you know, oil on somebody's forehead and oily substance. I think the anointing is more than just oil. You know, I think it is an impartation of an unction on one's life to cause that one to carry out an assignment that God has given them. Mm -hmm. You look at David, he was anointed by oil with God's prophet. That was the outward expression, but what, hap what happened inwardly was far more important. The, the power of the Holy Spirit came upon David to equip him for the future that God had for him. Mm -hmm. And I think that us, especially during this time, as believers and followers of Jesus, we need to get to that place where we allow God to empower us for his service. We need to be filled with what I like to call the special soul winning power. Uh, receive this power to live like Jesus in our world, power to you know, work miracles, power to walk like Jesus, power to witness. And if we don't have that, we don't experience that, which happens after salvation, which is called the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I think that we're not going to be effective, uh, especially in our time. So we're anointed to proclaim the good news. We're anointed to carry out the assignment that God has ordained for us. So that's one of the powerful ways that the Lord uses you is in evangelism. And I can always trust that my friend Matt Cruz will have a story or several stories mm -hmm. that inspire people to get out and begin to share their faith, to move in the power of the Holy Spirit. We know that there is a purpose to gathering. We know that God moves in our church gatherings and there's nothing wrong with it. In fact, I think those need to continue. And additionally, God also moves on the streets everywhere we go. And I know you have things that you can share that will really just inspire, ignite the faith. I want you to stir that faith yeah. of the viewer right now. Yeah, what's been on my heart is demonstrating the power and the love of God. You know, I, I think the world is not looking for a new definition of Christianity. I always tell people they're looking for a new demonstration of Christianity. Say that again. The world out there is not looking for a new uh, definition of Christianity. They're looking for a new demonstration of Christianity. We're called to demonstrate the power and the love of God. You know, the Bible says the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. And so that's what's been burning in my heart is to demonstrate his power and his love and go into you know, different places and, and even airplanes. I have a testimony about that I'll share in a second. But just going in and you know, in igniting the atmosphere with hope because I'm an ambassador of hope. I'm an ambassador of Christ. And so uh, I need to live in that way where people see him reflected in my eyes. When they see me, they see him. You know, And um, so, yeah, one time I was, I was on my way home from Colorado uh, and I was on the plane and... You know, <laughs> I always said I'm always late. I was late to the airport that day. That's our inside joke. We always joke about Matt being late. It's never yeah, your fault. They call me late cruise. They call you late cruise for a reason. But the circumstances are almost comedic in making yeah. you late almost everywhere. Well, you got to look at it. There's always divine appointments That's that right. come out of being That's late. Right. So, so thank you, Lord. You know. Uh, but I, I came late to the airport. I'm going to the kiosk. I'm trying to print out my boarding pass. Literally 45 minutes before I have to board my flight. That's how late I was. And those of you who are watching, uh, who travel, know that when you check in late, you're going to get a seat most likely in the back of the plane, if we, if, especially if it's a full flight. I get my boarding pass, and it says I'm zone one. <laughs> I'm sitting right in the front of the plane, boarding it. Uh, the first group boarding, and I'm thinking to myself, how did this happen? How did... This is favor from God. Thank you, Jesus. I get on the plane. I'm about to take a nap. I'm, I'm tired. I'm drained. I'm ready just to uh, wake up when we land. And all of a sudden, I look to my left, and this Muslim lady just walks right into my, you know, the, the aisle uh, where I was sitting, and she goes and sits by the window seat. And I'm thinking to myself, this is why God sat me in the front of the plane, not because I was late, but because he was going to touch this Muslim lady. He has something in store for her, and I just, I felt it in my spirit. So long story short, I'm sitting there. She initiates the whole conversation. She starts telling me how uh, she's from Pakistan. She's studying for her PhD, and uh, we go into sharing our faith. Uh, she shares hers with me about Islam, and I share Christianity with her and how it's just a relationship with God. It's different than any other religion out there. It's the only one that's uh, not about man seeking after God, but the opposite, God seeking after man. And so she looked at me and was very intrigued, very interested. And I just begin to 
share about Jesus and the life he lived on the earth and the price that he paid for us on the cross. And I look at her, and I just felt in my heart that she had pain somewhere in her body. Mm. And I said, ma'am, do you have pain anywhere in your body right now? And she looked at me like I was crazy, and she's like, how do you know that? I said, well, there's Jesus I serve. He lives on the inside of me, and he speaks to me. And I just feel that you need to be healed from something. She tells me she has pain in the bottom of her feet. So this is what I do. I take out my hand. Because I've been anointed for this, David. I, this is the moment where I need a damage. Paul says, I don't come with the wise or persuasive words, but I come with the power and the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. So I take out my hand, and I say, can I pray with you? She looks at me, she looks at my hand, and she says, if you're not a close family relative, I cannot touch you. But she wanted prayer, so she puts a scarf over my hand. Mm. I put my hand over the scarf. I said, that's perfectly fine. Because there's power in the name of Jesus. And I said, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to pray in two prayers. I'm going to pray, one, in the name of your God for healing. Then I'm going to pray in, in the name of my God for healing. Wait, wait. Say that again? <laughs> I told her. I was bold. I said, I'm going to pray in the name of your God for healing. And then I'm going to pray in the name of my God for healing. And we're going to watch which power shows up. And so she's like, okay. She's all confused. So I, it, it's time, David, for people to confuse us with Jesus. Our life is to be a demonstration of Jesus on the earth. And I reached out my hand, I put it over the scarf, and I prayed in the name of her God's name. And I'm waiting for her to feel the power. I'm waiting for her to feel healing. I'm waiting for that pain to leave. Nothing. She's sitting there, you know, waiting. I said, do you feel anything? She said, no. I said, okay, can I pray in my God's name now? She said, yes. I was waiting for this moment. I was like, Father, in the name of Jesus. There's just something about that name. When you mention that name, light enters dark places. When you mention that name, power shows up. And the moment I said the name of Jesus, she felt like a heat sensation go in her feet and the, pop, uh, uh, the, the pain just shoot right out. She felt the power of God flow through her body. And she's looking at me, not saying a word, but her eyebrows are just raised. And I'm saying, what do you, what do you feel right now? And she's trying to change the subject. I said, no, no, no. <laughs> what did you feel? She said, why is my feet on fire? <laughs> and I said, ma'am, that's the fire of the Holy Spirit. And that, that's the fire that burns everything out that's not of God. That's the holy fire. And I feel the anointing right now talking about it. And she looked at me and I said, that was Jesus. But I want to ask you something, ma'am. When I mentioned your God's name, he never showed up. But the moment I mentioned the name of Jesus, the name above every other name, the name that the Bible says that every tongue will confess that he's Lord, every knee will bow and, and just uh, declare that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And so she looked at me and she's like, I want this Jesus. And I looked at her and I said, just move around that leg and no more pain. No more pain was there. And I, I was just so amazed, man. I said, this is what it takes is obedience and moving without hesitation. Yeah. Wow, that is, so, that is an incredible story. And it reminds me of the prophet Elijah who calls yeah. down fire from heaven, the prophets of Baal, dancing about, doing all they could, and nothing happened. Here's mm -hmm. the issue. It's not just the false prophets who are dancing about causing nothing to happen. Sometimes it's the believer who doesn't know that the demonstration of the power comes to the Holy Spirit. Come on. And they try to accomplish in the flesh what can only be accomplished in the Spirit. This is why I appreciate what you're doing, my friend. Mm -hmm. And I think you are a forerunner for what God is doing in a generation. So mm -hmm. I want you right now to look at that camera. And I want you to just encourage the viewer. And I want you to speak to the viewer who is timid, who is wondering how God might use their life, and I want you to encourage them to step out and understand why they're anointed. Come on. I just want to encourage you, man, if you're feeling this timidity in your life, if you're feeling like you're just inadequate or you're just not bold enough, I want to tell you that you have the spirit of almighty God living on the inside of you. And I want to encourage you that the one standing beside you is stronger than the one standing against you. The Bible says that we have the same spirit, the same power that raised Christ from the dead living in us. You've got that power living in you. And friend, if you're watching this right now, wherever you're watching from around the world, I want to tell you it's not a failure failure or a lack of power on God's part, but as believers, it's our failure to tap into the power source He's already given us. So I want to encourage you, no longer be shaky about what you believe. It's time to be shaken by what you believe, to know that you've got the power of God in you to lay hands on the sick and to see them recover. And before I pray for you, Luke 4, 18, David says that the Spirit of the Lord is on me and He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom 
for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And if you're watching this right now, I just pray, if you could just lift up your hands wherever you're watching from. Lord, I just pray right now that you would stir up the desire within them for just purity, for holiness, God, for an intimacy with you, but mainly that you would infuse them with a confidence to walk in the power of the Spirit. God, I pray that your voice would become the loudest one they hear and the one they're most sensitive to. God, I pray that you would ignite a holy fire in their heart, that you would stir up this hunger and passion for souls. God, that you would give them a courage uh, to move beyond their boundaries, to get out of their comfort zone, and to move without hesitation because people are waiting on their immediate obedience. I pray this now in the name of Jesus. I release the fire of the Holy Ghost over your life from the top of your head down to the soles of your feet. I declare a fresh passion and a fresh anointing to do what God has called you to do. In Jesus' name. Father, I pray right now for that one who is watching, who is stuck spiritually. I pray in the name of Jesus, the power that is present tangible anointing of the Holy Spirit, that same power would move right through my hands, flow right through that camera, and touch that one believing. I pray you would cause it to be like fire in their bones. Lord, put that unction in them. Let the Spirit give them the words. Fan into flame the fire of our love for Jesus. Cause us to proclaim that name boldly. In the name of Jesus we ask for the power of the Holy Spirit. Let it be so, Lord, in that name which is above every name. In the name of Jesus we pray. And I want you to say it because you agree. Say amen. And Matt, my friend, I absolutely love your ministry. And I want to say to every single Counter TV viewer, get behind this ministry. Support this ministry. Pastors, leaders, this man is one of the most dynamic speakers I've heard. Get him in your churches. Get him in your conferences. Get him to speak at not just your youth services. I'm talking put him in your conferences. Get him on your Sunday mornings. And those of you who can Go and support this ministry. This is We need more voices. We need more voices declaring the Word of God. We need more voices that are out there preaching the truth, and this is one of them. So if you're looking for another ministry to support and you want to support them additionally, and I'm encouraging you, go and support this man of God. Go to the events. Get behind him. Follow him on social media. Just connect in every way you can, because I know... Your life is going to be blessed as you connect with Matt Cruz's ministry. Matt, my friend, where can they go? Is there a single website that they can go to which would direct them to everything? Yeah, you can go to mattcruzministries.com uh, where there's a, my bio on there, um, booking, uh, partnering, uh, social media, evangelism testimonies. Uh, all that stuff is on there. Lots of good things, and you got content and all sorts of things that I know will bless them spiritually. But I want to thank you for coming on. I honor the gift on your life, and I appreciate you joining me here today. Thank you, David. Well, that is it for this edition of ETV Interviews here on the Encounter TV Network. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more from Encounter TV, subscribe now. We have hundreds of videos, including worship clips and inspiring messages on topics like the Holy Spirit, healing, spiritual warfare, prayer, and more. We also have footage of the power of the Holy Spirit at work in our miracle services that we host all around the world, especially if you want to know more about and draw closer to the Holy Spirit. This is a channel I know you'll love. This is the Holy Spirit's channel, Encounter TV. Encounter the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.